cheat. A cheat sheet for quadratic equations. Well, first of all, a quadratic is of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, you know, we could, well, we could say y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, right, where a is not equal to zero. So that's the first thing in the cheat sheet. Right? The second thing is factorize for roots. And remember, the cheat sheet is just us making these notes and everything supposed to fit on the corner of a piece of paper, right? So ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. That is how we solve for roots, and we have to factorize this. So remember method one, when a is one, that will imply that we have to find two numbers that when we add them, we get b, but when we multiply them, we get c, right? And so, you know, um, just as a reminder, the cheat sheet doesn't have to have everything. When a is not equal to one, right? Then we'll have to find two numbers that when we add them, we get b, but when we multiply them, we get a, c. The third method is the wonderful quadratic equation. X is equal to, what it was? What's the quadratic? B squared, no, minus b plus or minus the square root. Minus, somebody remember, what's the quadratic equation? Minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, does it? Minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, but that's like all square root over okay. 2a. All over 2a. So that is method 3, and then method 4 of the cheat sheet was the completing the square. That is where you put it in the form a into x plus h squared plus k is equal to zero, right? This is the completing the square form where h, somebody else remind me what h is. I guess we, um, st we stay in here late today, boy. B over two. B over two a. What is k? We stay in here till eight o'clock tonight. K, uh, Sabira, where's K? I think K is B squared minus four AC over four A. Yep. <laughs> right, so these are the four methods that will help us solve a quadratic. Right. And then next on the cheat sheet, we were talking about um, we were talking about sketching. You can make a note that if A is positive, then that will give us a smile. And if A is negative, that will give us a frown. That is one thing that we could talk about. Another thing that we could talk about is um, and you know what's a great way to do a cheat sheet? A great way to do a cheat sheet is in a diagram. So imagine we have a diagram here. Right? right. So we have the roots here. And all of these here are how to find the roots. All of this is what does help us find the roots, right? Then we have so the, uh-huh. You did alpha, beta? No, I didn't talk about alpha, beta, but alpha, beta okay. is, is, is another name for the roots. Alpha, beta. Yes, alpha, beta is another name for the roots, especially when you're talking about admats. Alpha, beta is 
on the um, CSEC curriculum, but they rarely ask about it. That is more in the ad maths they will talk about it, right? Um, but alpha is just when you talk about just naming the two different roots. Uh, one is alpha, one is beta, right? Um, that is all that that is. But the roots, all of this here is how we find the roots. Um, the turning point, remember the turning point is minus HK. That is the turning point. We have the line of symmetry. And that line of symmetry is the line X is equal to minus H, whatever minus H ends up being. This point here gives us C, which from the equation. Yeah. And um, I think that is it for the cheat sheet. Do we have anything else that needs to go in the cheat sheet, essentially? Right. We see here that to, to find the turning point, we need to, um, to, to have H and K to find the turning point. Right? Um, just now, is it? Yep. For ACR, we get K wrong, you see? I know I can't trust all you. That is K. We get K wrong. B over 2A. And yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. We had to know it. 4AC minus B squared is what K is. Don't get it mixed up. 4AC minus B squared all over 4A. That is what K is. I know something was off. I had a feel it. B over 2A, yes. Minus HK, yes. Anything else? You know, yeah, we talk about domains and stuff, but you really have to. Yeah, well, we could actually make a note of domain and range. And look, I talked I actually talked about the alpha beta here. So if you um if you if you look at the video, you'll see it, right? The videos, you'll see where I talk about the alpha beta, but you don't really need it for for our exam. Um. Yeah, minus HK. Yeah, that's and that is pretty much it. So I think that is it for the cheat sheet there. That is everything that we need to know. Once you know all of this stuff, you should be able to answer any questions. And one thing we could add to the cheat sheet is this here. All right, let me call this A and let me call this B. So this is your domain where the X values, where the graph exists, the graph exists between those X values. So X is between B and X is between, well, A and B. And then the range will be this. And this so this here those y values in which the graph exists in right this is um, the range the range of the physical graph because you know the the actual curve will go on to infinity so the range of the physical graph is you know let me call this uh, let's call this uh, I don't want to use A and B again. Let me call it P and Q. And so Y will have to be less than Q, but greater than P. So Y is between these two values here. So this should cover it for a cheat sheet for um, quadratics. Now let me dive into the questions, right? What is going on with this question? And you can see here, the diagram below shows the graph of y is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3 for the domain x is between negative 4 and 2. So let me check first of all. Let me just see some of those things that we already know, right? First of all, I see an x is between negative 4 and 2. I could see that here on the graph. That is negative 4 there. 
and that is two there. So this is the domain of the, the span of x values that this graph is covering right now. The graph doesn't cover more than that, right? Um, so yes, we have the quadratic equation. So this is the equation. I could see that y, um, A is a positive. So I will expect a smile, yes. I could see that um, C is negative three. And so it does cut at negative three there. I could even read the turning point. So how nice of thee that I don't have to, to work out the turning point. I could actually just read it. That's so wonderful. They're so kind. I hope I'll get a question like this. All right, so use the graph above to determine the scale used on the x-axis. So the x-axis being this axis here, and the scale used, as we can see, is 2 centimeters to 1 unit, right? So 2 cm equals 1 unit. That is the scale. You can see how I does always advise you to use the same scale on both axes. However, it is not, um, you can use different scales on, on, on the different axes. So you can see that on the Y axis, they actually use um, one centimeter to one unit on the Y. So they use different scales on each axis that will cause your graph to be stretched. Um, but it'll still, you'll still be able to read everything off of it. But I do advise if you are ever doing a graph, unless they specify what the scale should be, you should just keep it the same, right? Um, the value of y for which x is negative 1.5. So if x is negative 1.5, Right, so this is negative 1.5 here. The value of y on the graph will be about here. And this is where we had a read, right? Um, negative 3.2468 and then negative 4. So negative, so y will be negative 3.8. The values of x for which y is zero, these are the roots. When y on the y-axis, you notice they say the values, right? So when y is zero, right, this is the line y is equal to zero. The line y is equal to zero, you could see it passing through zero day. That is the x-axis. So they want the values of x for when y is zero. That is actually the roots. So the roots now, that being, um, you can see here x is negative three and x is one. So this here, we start off with a nice easy question where we just read and stuff off the graph, right? The last thing they ask us is the range of values. So they gave us this domain here. And we saw that the domain exists between negative 4 and 2. Right? So look at right here. Right? So the domain is the span of x values. So that is x is between negative 4 and 2. They're asking now for the range, which is the span of y values. So we can see here that for the range, the span of y values, well, y tops off at 5. So it'll be less than 5. 5 is the highest it'll go. And then it will not go lower than negative 4. Negative 4, yes. So y, the range will be y is between negative 4 and 5. Right. So now we're talking about factorizing. Now what we were saying, because somebody was asking, Sir, do you have to factorize the quadratics? Can't you just use the quadratic equations? Yeah. So somebody was asking, um, you know, why, why, why can't we just use the quadratic equation? Why do we have to learn that factorizing thing? Well, this is the reason why. 
because these are two factorizing questions and these two factorizing questions they look they give you a quadratic here and of course you can't use your quadratic equation no because they're asking you to factorize so yeah you had an auto factorize right not all of them are quadratics though so let's go through all of these factorizations um one at a time the first one being number one two x cubed y plus six x squared y squared remember these are factorization questions from the exam itself so they won't all be quadratic they will cover different um, factorization methods that we learned and this is the first factorization method that is the reverse of the distributive law right where all we have to do is ask ourselves well what is in common what do these two things have in common can I um thank you I, isaiah one. for being a little brave huh two x y two they have they have two in it both of them have two in it yes right both of them have x in it both of them have y in it right yeah but let me ask you something do both of them have x squared in it would you say no yeah they do isn't x oh, squared well, yeah, isn't yeah, x squared do. inside of this yeah, yeah, yeah so i want to pull out the biggest factor so i'll pull out x squared yeah, so two x squared y yeah and well the, well the the biggest well not the biggest factor well, the biggest factor i could pull out is x squared and the biggest factor for the y's i could pull out is y yeah, right? so you could see here that two x squared y multiplied by x will give me two x cubed y and then plus two x squared y multiplied by three will give me six x squared no multiply by three y that is what will give me six x squared y squared and so the y times the y is the y squared you have the x squared two trees are six yeah so don't just think that you just had to pull out the x alone look and see what is the biggest thing that you can pull out the biggest thing that you can pull out was this x squared here right um and yeah, that is it for this one. If we look at number, well, these are the two factors here, by the way. So you, we have factorized it. So this was pretty much distributive law, the opposite of that. The second factorization is a difference of two squares. 9x squared minus 4, right? What you need to learn to recognize whenever you see a minus, and you see squares on both sides or at least square numbers well then you have a difference of two squares so a difference of two squares here just a reminder that is a squared minus b squared whenever you have a situation like that then you could factorize it as a plus b into a minus b that is a difference of two squares this is a rule you just have to know so i could see here and i'll just go across on this side for the sake of having more room so you could see here that i do have two squares right because first of all four right i have the minus sign four could be seen as two squared so that is my b b squared right and this could be seen as if you know your laws of indices 3x squared because 3x squared well the square of 3 3 3 is a 9 right and well x squared is x squared so once you see a minus sign and you see two square numbers on either side is a difference of two squares so now i could see that a is 3x b is just simply 2 so the factors will be 3x plus 2 and 3x minus 2. so these quadratic questions helping us to um 
to revise other types of factorizations that we haven't seen since August or September last year. You know, so especially my newer students, you might not have been here when we did this type of factorizing or when we did um, the difference of two squares, you know. So I hope that you all understand it. Please feel free to ask me any questions. 4x squared plus 8xy minus xy minus 2y squared. Whenever you see four terms, and I'll just leave that one on the screen for anybody who's still writing it. Whenever you see four terms, you want to think about factorizing by grouping, which is something that we revised when we did quadratics. When we did quadratics method two, we had to use factorizing by grouping. Right? So whenever you see four terms, this is what you should be thinking about. So, you know, I will take this group and factorize that first. And I could see what do I have in common. I have Y in common. And remember, I have this minus sign in front of there. I'll open brackets. So Y times X will give me minus XY. Well, minus Y times X, that is. And then I'll have to put a my. Will I put a minus? No, I'll have to put a plus. Because minus y multiply by a plus something will give me a negative. And this something will have to be 2y. Right? So minus y times um, plus 2y will give me minus 2y squared. And then when I get this factor, I will put this factor over here. And I will look for the other factor. You could see that I will just need to have 4x multiplied by x will give me 4x squared. And then 4x multiplied by 2y will give me 8xy. And so my factors will be 4x minus y and x plus 2y. We are talking about this and you could see here i factorize completely so this is just another factorizing look at the same thing this here i'm noticing a square number on this side and i'm noticing a square number on this side so this is another difference of two squares this one here i have four terms so you want to think grouping and then this one here is an actual quadratic and you can see that this quadratic um, a is not 1, so we're going to have to use the factorization by grouping method, right? So let me just do, I'll just cut them through real quick. I'm not going to tax all it too much today. Um, 4y squared minus z squared. Remember, this reminds me of a squared minus b squared. So let's see, right? I have the minus here, z will be the b, right? The b is z, right? Um, z squared. And what will be the a? The a will be 2y. Because 2y squared, the square of 2 will give me 4, and the square of y will give me y squared. And so you can see we have a being um, 2y and b being z. So you just had to remember that to factorize it, you just need A plus B and A minus B. That is what it is. It's just something you had to know, right? And so this will be 2Y plus Z into 2Y minus Z. And I bet you my entire year salary that if you multiply this out, you will get back this all right number two we we're talking about uh, factorization by grouping again so i'll just do it real quick here you have two a x minus two a y minus b x plus b y so i will factor these two first they have b in common i have my minus here and i'll put the b here b times x will give me minus bx 
and b times minus y be careful with the signs the minus multiplied by the minus is what will give you the plus here and so i will put that x minus y on this side and i see that i'll have to have 2a over here to multiply by x to give me 2ax and then 2a times negative y will give me minus 2ay and so my factors will be 2a minus b is one factor and then x minus y is the other So I hope you all getting a good reminder today as to all of these methods of factorizing. Please let me know if I'm going too fast because I know I'm shrinking this one already. So if anybody didn't write it down yet, tell me and I'll blow it back up. Right now my cat literally knocking on my door. All right, so let me check out an actual quadratic factorization now with number three here. We have three X squared plus 10x minus 8. This is a quadratic. We don't have to solve it. We just have to factorize it. Um, and we can see a is not equal to 1. So we had to use method 2, where I want two numbers that if I add them, I will get 10. And by the way, I might ask Alia for Alia help for this one. Eh? All right. And if I multiply them, I will get 3 times negative 8, which is negative 24. So, you know, I do in most of the questions this evening, I'm not bothering all too much, but if somebody could give me two numbers that when you add them, you'll get 10. 12 minus 2. Yes, very good. So, yeah, how you would do that is you would, how you would go about doing that is you would check the factors of 24. The factors of 24 being 1, 2, 3, 4, not 5, 6, not 7, 8, not 9, not 10, not 11, but 12. And I don't think anything higher than 12, right? And we can see here that the only thing is 12 and 2. That's the only combination that will give us 10. What about 6 and 4? Yeah? 6 and... No, no. There's not 6 and 4. Because the only way to get 10 would be to have 2 positive. 6 plus 4 is 10. Right? But this wouldn't give me negative 24. And if I have 2 negatives, 6 negative, 6 minus 4, I'll get negative 10. And I still wouldn't get negative. So no, it's not 6 and 4. It'll have to be 12 and negative 2 because 12 minus 2 will give me 10. And then 12 multiplied by minus 2 will give me negative 24. Right? So 12 and minus 2. These are the two numbers. I'm going to replace the middle number with those two numbers. So 12x minus 2x is what will give me 10x. On this side, I have 3x squared plus 12x. And on this side, I have minus 8. Now I go with grouping. I will group this first. And I will say, well, they have 2 in common, so I'll pull minus 2 on the outside. Minus 2 times x will give me minus 2x. And minus 2 times plus 4 is what will give me minus 8. Be careful with your signs. Right? Um, now I'll take this very same thing and put it on this side. X plus 4. And we could see that I'll need 3X outside here. To times X will give me 3X squared. And 3X times 4 will give me 12X. And so my factors will be 3x minus 2 and x plus 4. All right. So moving on. Moving on. Oh, look, we have a, a, a question. Oh, this question here. Yeah, now this. This is your number 9. Your, your 15 marks quadratic questions, right? So you'll notice the other questions there that were easier. Those were your number twos. 
This one here was a B. This could have been a number nine as well, right? But your number nine is the 15 mark quadratics question. So this is the reason why I say, you know what, let me do an actual quadratics class um, because it is important. It's 15 marks, yo. 15 marks, right? We have to factorize completely. And we have these two things to factorize here. So let's try factorizing number one first. Now that number two actually worrying me a little bit. Eh? P squared minus seven P plus. Okay, so we could see here that, um, that A is not equal to one and they did ask us to factorize. So I'll have to find the two numbers that when I add them, I will get minus seven. And when I multiply them, I will get two times three, which is six. Minus one and minus six. Minus one and minus six. I was thinking the same thing. So let's just replace two P squared, right? Now, should I put minus one minus six, or should I put minus six minus one? Minus one, minus six, six. I'll put the I'll put the minus six after because I'll probably want to group it with the three. But I think you should yeah, it, in this case because even this six here could grow still group with the two. So I think in either case it will you'll get it right. Uh, so I don't think you really need to worry about it too much. But um, so we'll go with minus one p minus six p. So you can just put minus p. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just put the minus 1p. You're supposed to just put minus p. But of course, there are people in the class who might, you know, um, who, who might get confused. So just to put the minus 1 there, just for you to see it, right? So we could see here that they have 3 in common. So I will pull minus 3 on the outside. Minus 3 times 2p will give me minus 6p. And minus 3 times minus 1 will give me plus 3. Let me know if I'm doing anything wrong. So I'll just put that on this side, 2p minus 1. And then I think I just need to go with p on the outside here. p times 2p is 2p squared. And p times negative 1 is minus 1p. And so the factors being p minus 3 and 2p minus 1. So that was part one there. Um, part two kind of worrying me a little bit. So let me see if I could figure out part two. Or they might have to help me with part two, right? 5P plus 5Q plus P squared minus Q squared. Very good, Ruby, just to have your common terms together. I could. Oh, so um, you can factor out the five and then group it. I like what Sibira is saying, right? Because I noticed that this looking like a difference of two squares, right? So if this looking like a difference of two squares, then this could this could be p plus q into p minus q. But how does that help me here? Plus five into p plus q. You know, I don't know. So what will the factors be then? So let's try what Sibira was saying. All right, and Sibira had a nice thing to, to actually just put the common term so we could rearrange it, P squared, and then we'll have plus five P, and then we'll have minus Q squared um, plus five Q. Let's see what that will do, boy. I'll have to pull out Q here. Q times Q will give me minus Q squared. And then I'll have to put minus 5 here. Q minus 5. That wouldn't help me. Because then I'll have to put the Q minus 5 on this side and it have nothing with Q there. Right? So yeah. I, uh huh? I was saying you could factorize the 5p plus rq and b. 
Yeah, so I think that what I did just now was actually the correct um, thing because what you were seeing here is to factorize out the 5, right? So that'll be 5 into P plus Q, right? And then I'll have this plus sign here. And on this side, I have P plus Q into... Oh, look, I got it. I got it. Check this out. P minus Q. This... Yeah, yeah, no. This could be factorized further because these are two terms separated by an addition sign, right? So what do these two terms have in common? These two terms have P plus Q in common, and? Yes, sir. Right? So they both have P plus Q in it. So I'll pull out the thing that they have in common, open brackets, P plus Q times five will give me five P plus Q, and then plus P plus Q times P minus Q here. And well, this will have to be in brackets by itself, right? Will give me this. And so this would probably be the actual factorization of it. Expand this, right? So I'll probably do this here, part B. Um, X plus three squared into x minus 4. So this expansion stuff is just basically um, your distributive law on steroids, right? So we're just going to have to take it one piece at a time. So first, x plus 3 squared, we have to know that that is x plus 3 multiplied by x plus 3. That is x plus 3 squared. Then you're multiplying by x minus 4. So what I will do is I'll expand these two first, and then I'll multiply this after. So um, we did this on many occasions. x times x is x squared um, plus 3x plus another 3x, and then plus 9. Right, so x times x is x squared. 3 times x is 3x. I multiply everything here by the first term. And then I multiplied everything here by the second term. So x times 3 is 3x again. And 3 times 3 is 9. And of course, I'm multiplying all of that by x minus 4. So I'll add these. So I will get x squared plus 6x plus 9 and I'm multiplying it by x minus 4. So now I'll multiply everything outside here. Right? The x squared times x will give me x cubed. And then I'll take the x squared and I'll times the minus 4. Right? And that'll give me minus 4x squared. Now we'll deal with the 6x. So 6x times x will be plus 6x squared. And then 6x times minus 4 is minus 6. 4 is a 24. 24x. And then now I'll deal with the 9. So 9 times x will give me plus 9x. And then 9 times 4, 9 fours are 36, right? Minus 36. Now I have to boil it down like Baji and simplify. So I can see that I have one x cubed term. In terms of the x squared, minus 4 plus 6 is plus 2 x squared. In terms of this, um, 24... 9 minus 24 is minus 15x. And then I have the minus 36 here. And so I expanded this out. Right, so now we get into some more quadratic -y questions here now. Given f of x is this. And we didn't really talk about what f of x is. Just take f of x to be y for now. 
we actually gonna do that in the next class and i had to talk to earlier about that after this class we don't really have much again after this is just this question or just two questions again so yeah right so if f of x is this right write f of x in the form this does this look familiar that is actually the completing the square form right so instead of using y they use f of x but just treat f of x just like y right um so 2x squared plus 4x minus 5 and they want it in this form a into x plus b squared plus c notice this is very similar to a into x plus h squared plus k in fact it's not only just similar it is congruent it's pretty much the same so we have to complete the square here so we know that h is b over 2a and k is 4ac minus b squared all over 4a right so let's just work out h and k because we know it as h and k so we go work out h and k and then i go worry about this b and c after right however however i have to slap c sec on the wrist for this one because this is very confusing yeah they should not Sorry. use b and c here yes i can know h and k not it's not that we know it as h and k but the students know that this is a this is b and this is c and a x squared plus b x yes, plus c so a student yes. might go and put 2x plus 4 squared minus 5, you know? Yeah? They could just take the b and put it where b is and take the c and put it where c is. And they could think that that is it, but no, that is not it. So, yeah, um, CSEC does have a way of writing questions to confuse people. All right? So, we know it as h and k, so that we work out we h and we k, yeah? Yeah, I accidentally did that today. Sorry? I accidentally made a mistake. You actually, oh, you made the same mistake today? Yeah, yeah today. Or once you see this, um, you should be reminded of this, completing the square. All right, that is that form. And so let's find out the form. Now, the B and the A that I use in here will be from the actual equation. X squared plus 4X minus 5. So this is the A, B, and C that are going to be using to find H and K. So H will be B, which is 4, all over 2 times A, which is 2. Yes. Right? So H will be 4 over 4, which is 1. Right? So I could start coming here now and say F of X is equal to, well, this A will be your normal A, which is 2. So that A is actually the normal A. And then X plus this B is actually H. This H. So we get this H to be 1 squared. And then let me talk about this plus C now. This plus C is actually K. So let me find out what K is. K is 4 times A times C, which is negative 5, minus B, which is 4 squared all over 4 times 2. So... 5 twos are 10 times 4, that is negative 40. 4 fours are 16, so that is minus 16. All over 4 twos are 8. So negative 40, negative 50, negative 56 over 8 is what? Negative 7. 
So we can see H works out to be negative 7. So that means that this C, sorry, not H, K. This C is actually this K here. And that is negative 7. So what the question wanted you to do, the question wanted you to see this and say, hey, that looks just like completing the square. Right? But you, as you can see, I didn't agree with them using a B and C. I don't mind they use A because it is the actual A that's supposed to go there. Right? But B and C, nah, Dredd, they could have used at least P and Q if they didn't want to use H and K. They probably didn't want to use H and K because they didn't want to give away the, the, the completing the square. But at least use P and Q now, you know, or something, right? State the equation of the axis of symmetry. Well, we know that we could find the turning point here. The turning point of this is minus hk. So the turning point is h is 1, so it'll be minus 1, and then your normal k, which is minus 7. And so therefore, whatever this minus h is, that is your line of symmetry. Of symmetry. I'll just put sim, and that is equal to the equation of the line of symmetry is x is negative 1. State the coordinates of the minimum point. Is it a minimum? Yes, it is. Because A is positive, and so you just get a smile. If A is positive, you get a smile. That means the point is at the bottom. It'll be a minimum point. Um, just now, this is part 2. And this is part 3. And they could have asked it the other way around because I needed one to get the other. Idiots. And now we had a sketch the graph. Sketch, 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 not draw. Sketch means, you know, what we are about to do. And draw means um, using a graph paper. Right? And on the graph, so we had a sketch the graph. And then on the graph, we had to show clearly the minimum point and the axis of symmetry. Well, I will show them everything, but ooh, we have a problem. You know, sketch the graph is two marks, right? The problem is we need the roots. All right, let me see what we need to sketch a graph. All right, we need, you know, we have this, we have this, you know, but we need the roots so we have to solve the equation thankfully we already have it in this form um, 2 into x plus 1 squared minus 7 is equal to 0 uh, you know we could just factorize it really but I wonder if we'll get the same thing well let's see right I'll throw across that 2 into x plus 1 squared is equal to 7. I think I might want to factorize it, you know. Because it might be easier to factorize. All right, let me see. x plus 1 squared is 7 over 2. And then I'll go how to find the square. Root of 7 over 2. All right? x plus 1 is equal to the root of 7 on 2. So when you throw across a plus 1, x is equal to this is minus 1. So it's a minus 1. I just had a 1 before. Right? So it's minus 1, and then you had the plus or minus the root of 7 on 2. So x is a minus 1 plus, uh, what it was, 1.9? And then x is a minus 1 minus 1.9 so it's this minus 1 must be a careless mistake so 1.9 minus 1 is 0 0.9 and this will be negative 2.9 this makes more sense so if we draw it here we could see that we have the root being here and 
And I'm so sorry, guys. I hope I didn't confuse anybody. 0 0.9, and then all the way over here, we have minus 2.9, and then over here, we gonna have negative 1, and then we can see how it will be cutting at negative 5. So this time, and then this will be about negative 7 here to give me my turning point, which should be there of negative 1 and negative 7. And so this. <laughs> right, this one look a little bit better. Right, this one, everything makes sense. And this is the line of symmetry here. And this is x is negative 1. So you could see here that every single thing that we talked about here was straight from the cheat sheet. Straight from the cheat sheet. Oh my goodness, look, we have solve a pair of simultaneous equations here. So we solve in simultaneously. Let's see. Y is equal to 8 minus X. And then the next one is 2x squared plus xy is equal to minus 16. So let's call this equation 1. Let's call this equation 2. And of course, I am going to sub equation 1, which is y is equal to 8 minus x in equation 2. So that means that 2x squared plus x times y, which is 8 minus x, and that'll be equal to negative 16. So 2x squared plus x times 8 is 8x and x times negative x is minus x squared, and that is negative 16. 2x squared minus x squared will give me 1x squared plus 8x. I'll bring this negative 16 across here to get positive 16 is equal to 0. And now we can factorize. So two numbers that when I add them, I will get 8. And when I multiply them, I will get 16. Anybody? 4 and 4. Eh? Thank you very much. Yes, right. So x squared. I, I know how, uh, how much I love this class. And so you all might want to stay till half 8. So x squared plus 8 x plus 16 is equal to 0. And seeing that 4, 4 plus 4 is 8, and 4 times 4 will give me 16. So both of them are plus. So it'll be uh, x plus 4 and x plus 4. Notice how we generate. We, we only get one answer here. Right? The answer here is therefore x is, no, sorry, x plus 4 is equal to 0. So x is negative 4. So you notice we get negative 4 twice. Yeah? We only get one answer. That means this graph only has one root. So that means that this graph only cut in at that one place, negative 4. So that means that negative 4, this graph going to look something like this. Right? And you see how it cut in at plus 16. So plus 16 going to be somewhere up here. Yeah. So this is an example of a graph that only has one solution when you get the same factor twice. Right? So now we could sub x is negative 4 in equation 1. y 
is equal to be careful 8 minus x which is negative 4 right y is equal to 8 plus 4 which is 12 therefore always make an answering statement x is equal to negative 4 y is equal to 12. we solve the pair of simultaneous equations we get we five marks state giving the reason for your answer whether this line is a tangent to the curve is this line a tangent to the quadratic let me see anybody is this they say here state given reason for your answer if this line is a tangent to this curve is it a tangent yes or no so let me do it quick um the thing is, when we are solving um, quadratics, right? Remember, you have a quadratic here, and then you have a straight line that's going to be cut in it. And so usually, when you solve a quadratic, you will get two different answers. Usually, you will get two different answers. But in this case, we only got one answer, one coordinate. You would get an X and Y for this, and you would get an X and Y for this. You know, usually when we solve it, we just get two values of X. But in this case, we only got one. So that means that in this case, the line is not cutting at two places. It only cutting at one. So in this case, we have negative 4 and 12 is up here. Is this a minimum? All right. So we could have the curve going so, and we could have the line actually coming like this. Oh, no, well, sorry. Yeah, I'll draw it a little curve here, All right? We could have the curve going so, and we could have the line actually just touching it, whop right there, and this could be a negative 4, 12. Yeah. So in this case, we could see the line just cutting in one spot. Let me see if any of this has to do with quadratics. Make R the subject of the formula. Uh, given that that, that work, oh, this is a nice one. So we'll definitely have to do this one. Factorize completely. These two more factorizing questions. So let's just cut this quick. And then we'll probably have one question again. Yeah, this is the last question of the night, right? So let's just cut these down quick. Formula of a cylinder is given by V is equal to pi R squared H. Make R the subject of the formula. Easy peasy. Pi R squared H is equal to V. I'll take the pi and the H and throw it across. So R squared will be V divided by pi pi h so the pi and the h are both multiplied so when you throw them across they'll both be b divide and then you throw across the square so r is the square root of v over pi h so that is this one this is a real nice one okay. given that x squared plus a x plus b is equal to this they want you to find the values of a and b so you are supposed to look at this right and let me write the question on this side here um, so we have x squared uh, plus a x plus b is equal to x plus 2 squared minus 3. Now, we could see here that this is of the form completing the square. A into x plus h squared plus k, where a is 1, h is 2, 
and k is negative 3. Okay. So, hmm, I need to find these. But I don't like how they use A and B here. Again, CSEC trying to confuse people. I do not like how they use A and B here. Because AX squared plus BX plus C is what we know. So I'm going to write that back over as X squared plus BX plus C. I'm just going to write it over because I know how to work with B and C, because all of these equations have B and C. So if we take a look at the H equation now, the H equation is B all over 2A, right? So that would imply we know H. H is 2. We know, um, we don't know B, but we know A, A is 1, so over 2 times 1. So I throw this two across so you can see that B is going to be equal to four. So that means that this number here is equal to four. That number being B in the general equation is actually represented by A in, um, in CSEC's very stupid writing of the question. Yeah, they're, they're writing questions to, 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 to confuse people, right? So we have the first one. Now let's check the second one here, which is actually C. We know the K equation has C in it, right? So K, the K equation is 4AC minus B squared all over 2, no, 4A. All right? So we know K is minus 3 um, is equal to 4 times a times c which is what we want to get minus b which is 4 squared all over 4 times 1 a lot of 4s here right negative 3 is equal to 4c minus 16 all over 4 i could actually say negative 3 is equal to I could cancel off these so that'll be C so cancel off the 4 there minus and cancel off 4 into 4 1 4 into 16 is 4 so C minus 4 so therefore C is gonna be I'll throw across the negative 4 it'll be positive 4 minus 3 which is 1 so therefore we could see here that this number here is 1 so in terms of the question now, the question wanted to know what this number here is. We got it as 4. What this number here is, we got it as 1. So we could actually put, therefore, A is 4 and B is 1. Whilst you are writing down that, let me just do this quick. This is a completion of two squares. So a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b into a minus b. And so x squared minus 36 squared is x squared minus 6 squared. And notice that that is two square numbers. And so the answer here will be x plus 6 into x minus 6. And then we have this factorization here. We notice that A is not 1. So I need two numbers to factorize this, where when I add them, I will get 5. But when I multiply them, I will get 12 times 2 is 24, negative 24. So I need two numbers. That when you add them, you get 5, and when you multiply them, you get negative 24. What are those two numbers? What are the, 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 the factors of 24? And this is what we had did already. 1, 2, 3, 4. Not 5, 6. Not 7. Not 9, 
not 10, not 11, and 12. So where's these two numbers now? And when you add them, you get 5, and when you multiply them, you get negative 24. 8 and negative 3. Thank you very much. 8 and negative 3, because 8 minus 3 will give us 5, and 8 times negative 3 will give us negative 24. So therefore, 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. I have to do the whole grouping thing. So that implies 2x squared. I have 8 and minus 3. So I'll keep the 8 on the side with the 2 and I'll keep the, the minus 3 on the side with the 12, right? So plus 8x minus 3x minus 12. So I could see that I could pull out minus 3 here. Minus 3 times x is minus 3x. And minus 3 times plus 4 will give me minus 12. And then I'll have to have the x plus 4 on this side. So I'll just have 2x on the outside. And that will give me that stuff. Yes. So now the factors here are 2x minus 3 and x plus 4. All right. So they've given us the graph of the quadratic y is equal to x squared. So this is the simplest quadratic you can have. y is equal to x squared. Right? And it is in this domain between negative 4 and 4. So I see in that between negative 4 and 4. Right? This is the span between. So let me see what the question asks me. I see it have a line here. And this looking like a quad. This is number six. So this is actually a coordinate geometry question that is involving quadratics here. So you see I have a line here and this line cutting at two points. Right? And I can see here that that's going to come into play. The coordinates of the points M and N are those two respectively determine the value of x and y so we have the um the quadratic which is y is equal to x squared this is a point on the quadratic where y is equal to 9 so therefore at y equals to 9 implies that x squared is equal to y, which is 9. Therefore, x will be the square root of 9, which is 3. So we get x here to be 3. Right. Now let's work out what, um, and this is 4n. And let me work out for m. We could see that the x value this time is minus 1. And it is on the curve. So because it is on the curve, at x equals negative 1 implies y is equal to x squared, which is negative 1 squared which is 1. So in this case, I got y is equal to 1. So, so therefore, y is 1. And we can see that that definitely does look 1-ish. And the x value here, oh, look, I didn't even have to work out the x value. I know, see, and I could read it. So this is 1. All right. So I got x to be 3 and y to be 1. The gradient of the line, do we have, is anything else here? All right, yeah. Yeah, we do have some other quadratic questions here. But part B is pretty much coordinate geometry. So let's just revise it. Part B, number 1, the gradient of M, N, which is the line. Um, let me just... Note that M is uh, negative 1, 1, and N is 3, 9. Right? So 
now we will just see that the gradient is y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So y2, I'll take that as 9. 9 minus y1, which is 1, all over, and you know, always use your brackets, x2, which is 3, minus, and this is why you should use your brackets, x1 is minus 1. So you'll see I have 9 minus 1 is 8 all over 4, because that is 3 minus minus 1, so 3 plus 1 is 4, so the gradient is 2. All right, the equation of the line, right? So, you know, I don't really even need to work out so much. Um, this is B part two. The equation of MN. You know, we know that the equation Y is equal to MX plus C. Y is equal to M, which is two times x plus in order to find c we would usually have to use to work it out using one of the points and put an x bar but no we don't have to work it out i can literally come here and see that c is three so just from the graph i could read that c is three so this is the equation of the line the equation of the line parallel to mn passing through the origin oh great right parallel to mn um parallel to mn means it doing this well that, that is not parallel not at all but it'll be doing this passing through the origin though so that will be parallelish right and it passing through the origin so that is zero zero right so the equation of that line, so this is B part three, all right? Parallel lines implies the same gradient. So therefore, Y is equal to two X it'll have the same gradient. And then C, well, if it cut in this, line, this at zero, zero, C is gonna be zero. So the parallel line passing through the origin will be Y is equal to two X. On the answer sheet provided, carefully draw a tangent line to the graph y is equal to x squared at the point 2, 4. So let me see where's the point 2, 4 here. This is the point 2, 4. I see in it here, I'll put it in red. And so I will carefully draw a tangent. Now you should use a ruler, but, well, that's horrible. The tangent should only be touching it right at the point so that's also horrible like this so this is me very carefully drawing a tangent all right so that is the thing as best as i could get so that tangent will only be touching at two four uh, let me see what the question want with our tangent now right Estimate the gradient of the tangent at the curve. Now, this is something that does require a little bit of thinking. Because they say estimate. They didn't say calculate. Right? I'll just shift this on this side. So they say estimate. Now, if you really check it, right? When you have y is equal, no, sorry. They, they want us to estimate the gradient. So when you have the gradient, m is equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. What that actually is, the y2 minus y1 
that is actually you know the y values that you know so you, you so that is really this vertical distance here is what you're taking right so that is the vertical which we call the rise right and then the x2 minus x1 well that will be two values of x so that is a horizontal distance the run so we could just estimate using this ah, no using this we could just estimate we could see we no don't switch off we could say all right you know what uh I'm noticing that my line kind of cutting at one is an estimate, so I don't have to be exact. So let me let me choose these two points here. This is a point um, zero on the one on the x, zero on the y, and this is the point two four, right? So I could see here that the rise is going from zero. The y values is going from 0 to 4, right? So that is the rise. The rise going from 0 to 4, so that is 4. And the run is actually on the x values going from 1 to 2. So that is one space there. So gradient is 4, estimated gradient of the line. And of course, we could probably use this these two points and plug it in here as well and you will get four but they say to estimate they didn't say calculate right that's it for tonight guys uh have a good week and i'll see you saturday thank you sir bye see you too bye bye